Uh, sorry, guys. What's going on here? All right. What up, guys? What up? What up? Dude, what? so it's Thursday nights, right? Thursday night live stream, guys. So appreciate it. Let me get everything fixed because, man, I feel like I'm, I'm not in sync today. Uh, part of it has to do, I uh, build a new computer. So the computer that I normally use to do my coding sessions and things of that nature, it's actually another computer. Now I still got the original computer working and I had to get that boot up, connect to it. So I am going to be coding all that one, but ultimately I need to migrate everything over to the new one. <sighs> Again, man, that's kind of been throwing me off, off, um, throwing me off a little bit, but but, but, but what I need to do real quick is my sources, man. My sources are kind of off now for whatever reason. Um, so now I need to find which. Um, so that's not it. So what I'm going to have to do is create a new source. So let me get that created real quick, guys. Um, so I'm going to call this All right, so let me get this added on. We're going to let's see. There it goes. It's exactly what I was looking for. All right. Let me add my other source real quick and then we'll be uh, good to go. Um, where is it at? Again, man, I should have had this done and just switching computers and doing, um, yeah, man, still trying to get all that in order. Almost there, but no, that's not it. Uh, nope, that's not it either. Oh, there it goes. All right, cool, 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 cool. So, the only thing I need to do now is, again, guys, sorry, take a little bit longer. Um, let me get this added real quick to my Steam Deck and I think we'll be good to go. Oops. All right, there it goes. This is it. All right, cool. everything I do so now let's make the transition cool all right guys now we can get started guys what up what up guys took a little bit longer so what I'm gonna be doing um, for the first hour is we're gonna be learning some flutter guys so I'm gonna get into damn it what did I do let me close out of this so ultimately what I'm gonna be doing here is um, we're going to get into learning Flutter. 
something I've been wanting to kind of start exploring. I'm going to get into some mobile development and uh, I think Flutter will be a good option, right? So uh, we're going to learn together, guys. Anybody who's watching who's interested in le learning Flutter, again, if you're not familiar with the Flutter, it is a, a, it is a framework when it comes to mobile development, but ultimately allows you to develop apps that could be deployed to Android and Apple Store, right? So you could do Apple, um, um, you could create apps for the iOS and Android devices, both. Um, there are some limitations, right? There are certain things that I have kind of read. I have done some, some research related to this. Um, there are some things that based on what I'm reading, at least the latest version of Flutter, there's a lot that it could do within the each um, operating system like Android, iOS. But there are some features that are a little bit more challenging to do or um, may not be doable, right? So it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. In those cases, that's where you always have to go native. Native would be creating a iOS app in Swift programming language, or for Android, it would be, uh, what is it? Is it um, uh, Kotlin, I believe? It used to be Java. I think now it's Kotlin is the language if you're gonna you know, build something natively. So, and, you know, again, that's a whole different project if you go, you try to build something natively. But normally when you do natively, you have all, you have access to all the features that exist. When you're using a framework, again, like Flutter, and there's other frameworks to use as, as well, but we're going to be, you know, dealing with Flutter is it covers the majority of the features that exist, but you do got to be aware it doesn't cover every scenario. So that's just something to be, uh, be aware of. But again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm new to it, right? So we're kind of coming into this very raw. Um, again, it's going to be new to me. And if it's new to you, let's explore together, guys, and let's, you know, let's play around with it. Cause that's kind of what we're going to do here. So let's look at the uh, get starting section of it. So select the operating system to get started on Flutter, which is going to be Windows. In my case, keep in mind, let me go back, guys, because I mentioned this many, many, many times, man. Too many people I hear, oh, you can only code on Mac. Okay, and again, bunch of BS. There would be no reason to install Flutter on Linux or Windows if that was even remotely true. But you know why? You know why there's an option for Windows and for Linux? Because that's not true, man. You don't need a Mac. Can you code in Mac? Yes. Is it a preference for some people to code in Mac? Sure. Nothing wrong with that. But to say that Mac is, on, is only people that code use Macs, that's a bunch of BS. Cause that's not true. And you know why I know that I, that's not true? Because I'm going to not code in Mac. I do code in Mac. I have a Mac Studio that I use for work. But I code in Windows as well. And I code in Linux by all means. So, yes, you do not. That's not true. So let's go ahead and install Flutter for Windows. And let's get started to install Flutter, your environment, blah, blah, blah. Uh, tools. Flutter depends on these tools to be available. Uh, yeah, so this is already installed and Git. I got Git as well, so that's not an issue. So let's go ahead and download this bad boy and let's get it installed. Uh, how big is the file? That's a big, it's not a small file. It's pretty big. It's almost a gig. So I, I am remote. I am remoted into my, um, computer that I Again, normally do my YouTube videos. So this is Windows 10, which is yeah Windows 10. But I have every, all of this I have already, right? So if you're working with Windows 10 at least or newer, Windows 11, then yeah, shouldn't you know everything should be pretty, pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and extract this. We'll get it extracted here. Is it extracting or what? Yeah, there it goes. So once we get that extracted, we'll go ahead and get fluttered installed again, guys, anybody who join in, we're going to spend some time 
Um, I'm going to start learning Flutter. So again, I'm going to be live streaming as I'm learning, you know, Flutter uh, framework. And uh, by, by all means, man, if you're new to Flutter and you're getting started, you know, you want to get into mobile development, that's what Flutter is. Flutter is a framework. It uses Dart programming language. To, so it's the programming language is Dart. The framework is Flutter. And it's used to create mobile applications for both Android and iOS. So instead of building an application natively in iOS, which is Swift programming language, or in Android, which will be Kotlin programming language, uh, Dart and the Flutter framework allows you to create mobile applications for both, right? You build it once and you deploy it to both. Um, to my understanding, based on what I have, you know, done some research and read on, it should accommodate for a good portion of the features that exist, but there are some features that may not be accessible through Fl Flutter. Um, so that just something, it depends on what kind of app you're building, obviously, right? If you're building with a, if you need to build a mobile app that may be required these specific key features that only exist through native development, then obviously Flutter would be an option. But to based on what I'm seeing though, it seems like probably the, you know, good eight ninety percent maybe even 95% of the features that uh, that exist on native development anyways exist in Flutter. But again, just there may be some use cases where it may not necessarily work. So it is something to keep in mind. All right, so this is loaded down, dude. It has a lot of small files. Oh, dude, no wonder. Look how I just realized because it was zipped and that was almost a gig. Now, as I unzip it, it's 2.25 2. gigs. And that's what's remaining, right? Damn, 10 minutes. Come on, man. I did not know it was going to take this long. That's probably my mistake. Um, damn, did not realize it was going to be this. I don't think it's going to be 10 minutes. Because I'm pretty sure some of these files are bigger. And that's where this will speed up and adjust itself. All right. Well, while that's going, uh, let that do its thing. Let's see what else is needed. So download the following install bundle. Get the latest release of Flutter SDK for other release channels and, and older builds. Extract the zip file and place container Flutter and blah, blah, blah. All right. That make, that's fine. Do not install Flutter to the path that contains special. Nope. Do not install Flutter in a directory. Like, all right, so doesn't want it in there for whatever reason. If you don't want to install a fixed version of the install bundle, skip step one and two and get the code from the repo um, and change branches to get whatever version. Let's see, you are not ready to use Flutter. Update pass if you wish to run a flutter command in the regular Windows console. All right. Also, uh, as of Flutter 1.19 dev release, the Flutter SDK contains the Dart command alongside Flutter command so that you can mo more easily run Dart command line programs. Downloading the Flutter SDK also downloads the comparable blah, blah, blah. Okay, so pretty much it gets bringing in both of those SDKs. Uh, you got the, the command line interfaces pretty much, one for Dart and one for Flutter. It's what's what's that saying. Um, all right, seems like it should be almost done. Yep, see, again, it said 10 minutes earlier, now down to one minute, so it's, it's about there. However, if you use PowerShell and in it where blah, 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 all right run flutter doctor from a console window that has flutter directory in the past so yeah flutter flutter doctor run the following command to see if there are any platform dependencies you need to complete setup so i guess flutter doctor kind of checks your system to see are you there anything missing anything that needs to be added on installed etc this command checks your environments 
and display the report of the status of your Flutter install. Uh, check the output carefully of the software you might need to install or further tasks. Okay, so it would tell you if you're missing, you need to install something, it even provide the URL. Android SDK is missing. So let's see, the following section describes how to perform these tasks and finish the process. If Flutter Doctor returns that either the Flutter plugin or Dart plugin of Android Studio are not installed, move on to set up an editor to resolve this. The Flutter tool may occasionally download resources from Google servers by downloading, use, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, all right. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and let's see. Uh, Flutter. So let's see. All right, so unzip, extract. Okay. Do not install Flutter. Okay, extract the zip file, then place the container, the contain Flutter. In a, okay, so I got actually, whatever I unzip, I need to move it to a specific location. So let me move that to C drive and I'm just going to put it in here under C drive. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me go ahead and copy this. All right. So now I'm going to move all the files over. Damn it. I should have just unzipped it to the right location. Now the move obviously going to be way more faster and you could tell it says 45 seconds already. The unzipping piece does take a bit longer. All right. So once we finish moving everything, um, if you do not want to install a fixed version, okay. Do not install flutter in a directory file, blah, blah. Okay, cool. You are now ready to run flutter command in your console. Update your pass if you wish to run Flutter command in the, in the regular window console. Take these steps to add Flutter to your pass environment variable. Yep. Okay. So it sounds like we're going to have to, if um, under user variables, yep. So we're going to go in there. What I'm going to do, if the entry exists, append the full pass to Flutter bend using. Okay. That makes sense. If the entry does not exist, create a new variable. Uh, name pass with the full. All right. So ultimately, this is if you want to just type in in the terminal, right? Type in the word Flutter. It'll it'll act kind of like Python, right? When you run Python, you type in the word Python, and then your your terminal right knows what it is, knows like which folder pass the Python dot exe exists to be able to run your code to interpret. Same thing with the Flutter. It's not in your um, environment variables by default, but you could always run it, obviously, right? So, for example, we have it in here. If I were to open in terminal, right? I'm inside that location. So, from here, it would be... Um, well, let me see, right? Uh, bin. And there's flutter in there. So if I were to type in flutter. Um, hold on, let's see. So let's go ahead and add it to our pass first, right? So let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, environment variables. 
All right, under pass. Uh, this is user variable for my name, system variables. So let's look at system variables. Cause that's what I want to look at here. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be under system variables. Let's click on edit. So in here, I'm going to let's create add a new one. Make sure that it's not in here. And nope, it is not. And the new one is going to be. Let's see. This flutter bin um, if the if the in entry exists append the full pass to flutter bin if the entry that I create a new user variable pass uh, with the full pass to add the value Yep. All right. You have to close and reopen any console windows, which I do have open. So let me go ahead and close and let's go ahead and reopen a new one. I guess let me just type in terminal. Oops. So let me see if I type in where flutter uh, cannot find files for the specific pattern. All right, so now I'm in the C, yep, um, where Flutter, oops. Uh, let's see. A uh, note as the Flutter 1.19, what version did I install Flutter? Due to this 3.7, this is way past this. Okay. Um, however, if you are using PowerShell in it, where's an alias for alias of where object command? So you need to use the where dot instead. Um, I'm trying to think. So this is this. Uh, let me see something real quick, man. When it talks about where to move it to, it says extract the zip file and place a container flood flutter in your desired lo inst installation location. For example, this folder. Well, in my case, I don't have source. I literally just put it in flutter, right? Um. So this is all under bin. That's what it seems like. So if I go to flutter, then I go to bin. Oh, here's my exe files. Damn it. Okay. I don't know how I missed those. So um, which is what flutter. Bin 
flutter.exe. Oops, it's not what I wanted. Exe. Whoa, there's no dot exe. Uh, this is not an exe file. Never mind. I thought it was, but it's not. There it goes. All right. Let's see. What do I get? So this is where Flutter create output directory, create a new Flutter project, Flutter run, run your Flutter application. Let me make this bit bigger because it is kind of small. All right. So that makes sense. So let me open up another window because I'm just curious now. So it's not finding it, so I'm trying to think why now. Oh, did I not save this? Um, where's Flutter at? Dude, it's oh, there. I go. It is in here. Dude, I never saved it. Damn it. All right, let me go ahead and close out of everything. Let's open up terminal. There it goes. Boom, I found it. All right, cool. So now I don't have to go into the actual folder. Just type in Flutter and I'm good. Or um, Dart and same thing. Cool. Got it, dude. All right, so now we got that set. So now we're good. So we could run our command. So now let's do a run doctor. Right, so I need to run this from that folder. So probably the easiest way, let me just go into the folder. Open in terminal. So I'm in that folder and now I'm going to do flutter. Uh, oops, damn it, I typed it in, typed in doctor wrong. So let's see what do we get see if everything's installed properly do we have any issues do we not have issues so the only thing that i see what do we have so visual studio the level up for windows visual studio community visual studio the missing necessary component components please rerun visual studio installer for the desktop the level met with c plus plus workload and include these components um Android uh, tool chain, the level for Android devices, unable to locate Android SDK. So yeah, do you need to install this? Install Android Studio from here on the first launch. All right, so let's go ahead and get this installed. Because again, we're, we're developing for both iOS and Android, and this is something that needs to be installed, which I do not have. So now I need to install this Android Studio, which I'm um, trying to think now. Would get the official integrated development environment for Android app. Well, this is not what I want. I don't want that. I just need to download. Uh, let's what? What do I need to get for Android Studio? Install Android Studio. Okay, so let's go to this process. So I'm assuming download Android Studio. Is this? Is this it? And it's. I'm gonna assume this is a big file as well. Damn, it's about almost a gig too. But it's actually downloading kind of, kind of quick, so it shouldn't take too long. So again, guys, there, there's a setup process for sure. So if you're going to be learning Flutter, 
after you install Flutter, you pretty much get in Flutter and Dart, the Flutter framework and then Dart programming language. You got to move it over to a specific location. Uh, it doesn't have to be specific. But you got to move it somewhere, right? Have it somewhere. Then you have to go to your, your, syst your system uh, variables and add that to your system variables so you could access it through the terminal, which is ultimately what I have done. So now it's going through the process. So we're going to install Android Studio because that's missing as well. So let's kind of walk through that process. Um, what, let's see, what is this? A pre-configured and optimized Android virtual device for apps. Testing uh, recommended. Yeah, so let's just get that for now. That's fine. All right, so we're done. Nope, don't start. Let's hit finish. Okay, so now let's go back to my terminal. And what else? On first launch, it will assist you in installing. Um, all right, so maybe I guess I do need to launch it. Let's go ahead and launch Android Studio. Uh, standards fine and here it goes here's the Android SDK built yep that's exactly what I need so let's go ahead and get this installed now so once that's so as you could tell I ran this flutter what was called flutter doctor right ultimately trying to see if you're missing anything and I was missing some stuff what I was missing was the Android Studio, which kind of got, see this red X. So now I went to go and install it. Um, there you go. Finish. All right, let me close out of this. I don't need that open. Now let me go and run it again to see if I still get that issue or not. Okay, so now a little bit better. So let's see what's missing. Command line tool component is missing. Uh, run pass to SDK manager install. See the developer command line for more details. Android license status unknown. Run flutter doctor Android license to accept the SDK. All right, so let me do this first. So let's go ahead and click on this. Uh, the Android SDK, the command line tool. So we need to get that set up. In Android Studio, click File, Project Structure, select SDK Location, Left Panel. Uh, you can install and update each package using Android Studio SDK Manager uh, or the SDK Manager command line tool. Let's see. All right, let me go back. I don't need this. Let me close out of this. Make this a bit bigger, still kind of small. Okay. Uh, Android, let's see, command line is missing, run. Let me see where. Android Studio. All 
run path to SDK install blah 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 latest um I mean even though this is like a warning sign I want I don't know if that necessarily stops us from continuing I guess let me try this one real quick so let's do flutter doctor uh, Android license Android SDK manager not found update to the latest okay so I need to install the uh, SDK manager that's why which is this guy so let's kind of see the SDK is the command line tool that lets you view install update Yep, yep, okay. Um, download the latest command line tool only package from the Android Studio and unzip the package. Providing a command line tool package. Let's take a look at this. Located in command line tool replaces. So let's see where is this located. Um, let's see. the Android SDK command line tool package located in command line tools located in Android SDK um So let me see. I may have to open up. Let me open up Android Studio. Yo, what up, random? What up, man? Uh, you going? You gonna uh, on the gaming channel tonight? Um, I'm not. Sh probably not tonight, man. Probably tomorrow, anyways. Uh, tomorrow. I may be on, I'm think I may be on a little bit tonight, but not 100% sure yet, man. Um, depends on how long this stream goes. If this stream goes for a while, so far only been, it's what time is it, about 10? Um, but yeah, man, like, one, I kind of get in the habit, man, once I get going with something, it's kind of hard for me to stop. So once I get going, if, if... If I keep going, then yeah, man, I may go for a while on what I'm doing here. Um, but if I do get on Twitch, it'll probably be like in the next 40 minutes or so if I do get on. So what time is it now? 10. So maybe by 11. Put it that way. If I if I do get on, it'll be it'll be by ele around 11 o'clock or so. So I'm just trying to get all of this installed over here. Um, so let's see. All right, let's go back. Let's see what I was. Um, project. We're gonna. We, what do we say? New project. Um, file. Android Studio. Click file. Click file and then project structure. Select SDK location, the left panel. Uh, 
Uh, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. So let me go back, man. Let's look at what we have here. I'm going to assume that we still should be good. Um, now, it is missing these components. You see plus plus. So what are we missing here? Visual Studio is missing necessarily components. Visual Studio community. Uh, so that this, in this case, if there are multiple build tools versions available, install the latest. C++, you make tool for Windows and Windows. So let's look at Visual Studio Community, this version. Oops. Um, so this is the latest version. There it goes download a Visual Studio. That's what I was looking for. The community version. So technically, we probably did don't have to download Visual Studio. Well, we we could have done just downloaded those key dependency files that we needed. Um, now I think the reason why I said Visual Studio because it has all of those included already in it, right? So that's fine. We'll get this installed. Uh, maybe it doesn't take too long. But you could you could tell, man. There's a lot of setup involved, right? There's a lot that needs to be. Needs to be done. Um, so let's see. We have our .NET, which is fine, just in time. Uh, what else? I think we have. Look at some of the individual components. There, uh, so that's C sharp, Visual Basic. So let me see what what else. Um, and include these components. Which here's one of them: the C plus plus C make tool for Windows. All right. A Windows 10 SDK. Windows 10 SDK, there it goes. So what's the difference? Is it the version? This is the newer version? Yes, I believe so. All right, so let's go ahead. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. 
All right. Let's do download all, then install. So I think we should be good after this though, but let's go back to uh, what we're looking at. So run flutter doctor, it will tell us what we're missing. We already got that. I think for the most that we should be good. If flutter doctor return, okay. Uh, the flutter tool may occasionally download resource from Google server, okay. Android said oh, flutter relies on the full installation of Android studio, which we got already to supply its Android platform dependency though. However, you can write your Flutter app in a number of editors, a letter step. Okay. So we did do it in, we did install Android Studio. We went through that process. Start Android Studio and go through Android Studio setup with her, then install the latest Android SDK, command line, blah, blah, blah. And Android SDK build tool, which require Flutter Required by Flutter when the level up for Android run tools to confirm that Flutter has located your installation of Android Studio. If Flutter cannot locate it, run. All right, so what you can set up your Android device to prepare to run and test your Flutter app on your Android device. You need an Android device run in, okay, or higher. All right, that's once you connect it, you want to connect the USB, test it out. That's fine. Agree to license. Windows setup, additional Windows setup, Visual Studio, which I'm installing that right now. So that's being downloaded and installed. Um, all right, let's set up, set up an editor. You could build apps with Flutter using any text editor combined with Flutter command line tools. However, we recommend using one of the editor plugins for an even better experience. These plugins provide, so let's see, what are they saying? VS Code. So I think we're going to do ours in, in VS Code. Um, Okay, let's go to extension. So let's open up VS Code. And I need to see, man. I have a, I think this needs to be updated as well too. Let me check for updates. Check for updates. Nope. So let me close out of this project. Uh, close folder. All right. And let's start a new project, right? So I'm going to go to, for now, we're going to do sandbox. And we're going to do flutter. Uh, they just call it project one, right? So this is what we're going to be playing around with learning flutter. Again, flutter guys is a framework that uses dart, the programming language dart to create mobile applications, but the mobile application that you create in flutter can be, um, compiled to both Android and Apple iOS, right? So pretty much though they're, you know, Apple devices and Android devices, Samsung, you know, Google, etc. cetera. Uh, normally the way it's done, if you want to create mobile devices, like mobile apps, my bad, mobile apps, uh, the way it has been done years in the past, and it's still done today because there's, there's, a, there's reasons to do it that way, but be bit back then for sure you had to do it this way was you had to use the native language to build that mobile app. So let's say you want to build a Android app and a Apple iOS app. You had to use two different programming languages. You had to use, um, object, uh, Swift, I guess Swift is a newer language now, but yet you, you got to use Swift and then you had to use Java, which now they, um, Android uses Kotlin. So those, those are two different programming language with flutter. You either use one programming language, but you could build apps that compile to both. So that's kind of what we're going to be learning and playing around with. Um, let's go back and let's see. Oh yeah. I want to see about the extension. So let's look at our extensions 
find a extensions uh, for Flutter. Which I'm assuming is going to be this one. So this one's already installed. Interesting. I don't even recall installing it, but I guess I did. Okay. So I guess I'm good with that then. So I'm going to be using VS Code. That's already installed. Extensions like Flutter install. Boom. There's also one for Dart. So let's look at Dart. Um, so is there one for Dart? There's also this. Oh, this also installs the required Dart plugin. Never mind. So that installs both. All right. Validate your setup with Flutter Doctor. Uh, invoke view. Boom. Okay. Type doc and select Flutter. Run Flutter doc and review the output. Damn, damn, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back. All right, so, lo so let's go to um, Dr. Run. Yep, there it goes. Doctor found issues in two categories. Damn it. So let's see what the issues really are. Well, the issue is probably the one that I'm trying to install right now. Here's one of them with the currently Visual Studio installation is incomplete. Yep, because it's installing. So I need to wait till that finished installing. And what was the other one? This Android. So this one, I'm actually kind of stuck. So I'm trying to see run pass to SDK install. So let's Google this real quick. Command line tools. Cause we do need to install this install command line tools. I don't have a clue on what any of this is. So I'm pretty much what I'm doing, man. I'm going, I'm installing this, this, um, framework called flutter. So which uses the dart programming language. And again, a lot of this probably doesn't make sense. Cause I'm still in the setup stage right now. I'm trying to in configure and install everything. Cause there's all the dependencies. But ultimately, it's to get things set up first, and that, and, and again, that's some of the, the the challenges, man. And sometimes to you, if you set everything up, once you get everything set up, then you can start building your application. Which Flutter, the Flutter framework, is used to build mobile applications. So again, if you ever get interested in the future of learn, want to learn how to build mobile applications. Flutter will be probably a good option because you could build one app and deploy it to iOS and Android. Um, and that's, and that's what makes Flutter, you know, one of those, um, uh, frameworks that's kind of popular because you don't have to spend double the effort of building it and, and Swift, which is the iOS Apple programming language and then build it in Kotlin, which is the Android programming language. Now you got to learn two programming languages to build apps for both iOS and Android, which Flutter you learn one. So, but again, I'm going through the process. There's a lot of setup involved. I would say a little bit more than what I was thinking, man, I, I would say. So um, it would be nice for sure. So Flutter, or if anybody watches my video that works at 
that the level ups, the flutter framework. It would be nice to have one install that does all your checks, install your dependencies, and then you're good to go. Because, man, I do have to go and find and now download all these other dependencies that are needed, which kind of sucks. But so let's see where where is it at? So it seems like it's it downloaded. Now it's installing 99%. All right. So should be almost done. Boom. Done. Done installing. We, just, we recommend rebooting soon to clean up the remaining files. Um, all right. So we'll do that in a few. Let me go back to this and let's run. Let's look at it again by running Flutter Doctor. So pretty much is running Flutter Doctor and it's going to give me back to see if there are any issues or no issues or what. So in my case, two issues, but I did install one, this one, and it may be because I need a reboot. So let's see, where did I leave off? All right, so I think we're good now. We're going to do a test drive. So before we do the test drive, let me go ahead and reboot. Uh, this machine real quick and then we'll get started with that so let's two installations have updates available let's see uh, that's fine I'm not going to update those so let's close out of this Let's close out of this. Let's close out of this. Close, close out of everything pretty much. And uh, let me do a quick reboot. Restart. And again, what I just did guys is one of, it's a good reason to have a second computer. <laughs> To do all your work just like right now i had to reboot if i was using my streaming computer and doing all my work and then now i have to reboot the machine and continue then ultimately i got to kill the stream reboot and restream again which obviously will suck but at least since i'm working on, 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 on another computer that i have that i'm connected to i actually remote it into it's connected to my network so i remote it into that computer i have a lot of computers man i'm i have it's kind of like goes through some of my computers. I have a Mac Studio that I use for work. I have a PC. All my PCs I build myself, of course, obviously, except for the Mac Studio. That I did not build, but um, I have a streaming PC, which is what I'm just, which is pretty much this, right? That you see here. This is what's running my, my OBS Studio and streaming and all that kind of stuff. I have another computer which I use for gaming and also to do some coding stuff, coding videos. And that I build myself. I have another computer, you know, this one is the one that I remoted into, which is this guy, you know, this guy here. And that's, this is my old gaming computer slash, um, um youtube content creation computer that i had before so this is the one that i i actually don't use no more because i end up building a new gaming slash i don't want it whatever youtube tutorial type computer that i use for that which is actually better it's faster than what i the new one that i built but i'm still going to use this one this one is good to use to do you know like what i'm doing now right so um if things break, doesn't matter. I have another computer I could always go to as a backup. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and open up the terminal again. Let's go ahead and run Flutter Doctor. Um, make this bit bigger. I don't know why I keep it being so damn small. All right, Flutter Doctor. Let's hit run. And this should tell us our status. Are we in good status? Are we in poor status? Nope, we still have two issues. Not sure why we do, but we do. 
So it seems like even though we installed Visual Studio is missing necessary components, please rerun the Visual Studio installer uh, with C++. Dude, I swear I installed these as well. Um, components. So I need to install the SDK manager as well. Hmm. Let me see if we could continue on without that. All right, so now we're going to create an app. So we're gonna ultimately create a new project. So again, if we go to Visual Studio, See how it kind of tells us invoke the, if we go to the command section, we could go ahead and type here flutter and it would give us a few commands, right? One of them is going to be a new project. And the kind of project here is going to be an application. So there's different projects, plugin, package, module, but in our case it's going to be application. I need to select where I'm going to save it, which is going to be this guy. So let me click on this folder. Uh, yep. Hit enter. And it should give us some boiler, boiler plate code, right? So a lot of frameworks, like I use a Django framework to do like web apps um, in Python. You know, there's a, again, there's a command that you can run that will give you with what is considered boilerplate code, pretty much like a template to kind of give you everything that you need to get started. And that's kind of what's happening here. Your Flutter project is ready. Press F5 to start running. All right, so let's look at our next steps. It's a select application, create a folder. Yep. Enter your project name, which this one, yeah, I entered in the name. Wait for the project to comp to uh, creation to complete and in the main.dart file to appear. The above command creates a Flutter project that contains a simple uh, sample demo app that uses material components. No, when creating a new Flutter app, some Flutter IDE plugin asks for a company domain name. Um, the company domain name, well, that's kind of odd. I wonder why it does that. The company domain name and project name are used together as the package name for Android, uh, the build ID for iOS. When the app is released, if you think that the app might be released, it's better to specify the package name now. The package name cannot be changed once the app is released. Okay, so again, this is for demo purpose, but later on, if I end up doing something more you know, that will get released to the App Store. That's something to keep in mind. All right. Um, if VS Code was running during your initial Flutter setup, you might need to restart it. Uh, the code in your app is under lib main dart. So let's take a look at what we have here. So we have a few, few folders and files. So it said it's under lib main dart app, which it did open up. So this is actually our main our starting uh, file. You can tell it has, has dot dart because it again, it's a dart programming language, but it's the flutter framework that we're using. So if we take a look at what we're doing here again, this is very similar to JavaScript imports, um, even Python, I guess as well. I mean, a lot of these are the same way you import, then we're importing package. And then we're importing Flutter. And then of course, material.dart. Okay, then we have our void main. This is our main um, method that we have, which ultimately, which runs our app, which we have our, over here, my app. So keep in mind guys, everything that I'm saying here, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not, I don't know Dart. I'm not a Dart programmer. 
I don't know Flutter. Again, what I'm doing, I'm learning, right? I'm, I'm going through the process of learning. That's that's what I'm doing here. But I know concepts of code. I've been programming for a while in Python. I have done programming in JavaScript. I have done some C Sharp. When you know programming in general, there's things right off the top I could interpret and I could actually make sense of, even without even knowing the programming language. Right. Just because it's, you know, I have seen some things I have seen syntax uh, very similar to this before. So I'm able to make sense. I'm not going to say everything I'm going to know, but I'm able to make sense of a decent amount of it anyways. So let's take a look at the different classes. We have a home page class. We have a my app class. So this my app class is going to have, I'm assuming the home page right in here somewhere. Uh, my home page or no. Yeah, there you go right there. Boom. My home page, which is home. Then you got the title. And what else do we have? So this relates to the state, which belongs to my home page. Extend state to my home page. All right, so let's see if we're able to uh, run this. So it's launching. Let's see what we get. Again, I don't know if the dependency, there's certain file that maybe didn't install. Unable to find suitable Visual Studio tool chain. Please run. All right, so I do need to fix that first. So now let's go back and let's see if we could get this resolved. So let's go to Visual Studio. And let's see what needs to be installed. So let's look at what's installed. This is installed. Um, all right, let me go ahead and update these. So I do need to fix that before I can run it. So before we get started, some of the selected are no longer fully supported and will be when I receive security updates. Okay. So download, dude, my internet's doing pretty good. I'm getting about 80 megabytes download. So my one GB that's done. So now it's doing the installation piece. All right. Well, that runs. Let me let it run. Um, so I'm missing these main components pretty much. So let me s copy this and probably just try to find it direct. Oh, you know what? This is on Visual Studio 2019, and that's what the, what's being updated. So let's see if initially when I installed Community 2020, I wonder doesn't have that version. And maybe yes, I think that's what it is. So let me wait till that finish installing.
Mm, come on, it's about to be done. Yes. Oh, but it still needs to install the 2017 build. Damn it, you know what? It may make me reboot my machine again, too. Hmm. Okay, so while this is installing and doing its thing, or you know what? It finished. So if it finished, let me look at. Damn, never mind. It doesn't let me. Dude, that was fast. So the download, all right, the install is pretty, pretty quick too. All right, all up to date. I don't need a reboot, so that's good. Let's look at the 2019 um, individual components. Let me find, see, can I find what I'm looking for? Which in this case is going to be that. Uh, MSVC V142 VS2019 C. Oops. C plus plus so not for arm I'm looking for the x62 uh, build tools so these are the newer ones doesn't say which ones so I don't know if it matters or not oh here we go they're here the latest uh, what else so let me click on that what about C C++ C make for Windows and what else? Dude, did it keep my other ones to install? And then Windows 10 SDK, which this is the newest one. All right, let's hit modify. I swear, I, you know what? I did not click on those for the 2019. I wondered that's what it was. I think I installed that for the 2022. But it seems like what it's looking for in here is the 2019 build. So that was quick, man. It, so it installed, it downloaded pretty quick. Seems like it may be done installing. Hopefully we don't we don't have to reboot. Uh, yep, there it goes. So now let me run this again to see do we still have issues or not? Damn it, man. Why? What the hell? Okay, Visual Studio is missing. Please rerun the Visual Studio installer. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Dude, what is going on here, man? So let me go to the, uh, this is the one that I have installed. Individual components, MSVC V142. 
which is this guy here. This is not installed. And there it goes. It disinstalled all of this, right? Individual components. Uh, modify. So let's see if this fixes it or not. All right, so now that that's done, let me run it one more time. And let's see, what do we get? Still got issues with that, man. What's going on here? Let me make sure that this That it didn't get installed. Individual components. See, did so. This is already installed, right? MSVC V one four two. Yep. So now it's installed, anyways. What else? C plus plus C make. Yep, that's installed as well. And then of course Windows. 10 SDK that's installed. I'm not sure what else it wants. Visual Studio is missing necessary components. Please rerun the Visual Studio installer for the desktop development with C. Um, I guess let me, let me see, flutter doctor. Still the same too. Um, which won't let me run it pretty much so if i were to try to run this which is now trying to run I'm going to assume I'm going to get that same error message that I was getting right now. Yo, so what happened? So let me rerun it one more time. Actually missed it. I must have got an error message or something. Okay, so now I'm not getting nothing. It's not telling me yay, nay, nothing. 
Um, run and debug. Um, so let's try it one more time. I'm trying to, I'm wondering if that, is that the actual error message? I swear I got an error message earlier. This time I'm not, not getting nothing back. No error message, no nothing. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, which is kind of odd. All right, so let's see what are our next steps. Run the app. Locate the VS code status bar, the blue bar at the bottom of the window. Select the device. Uh, one device connected. So let's see, I think it's trying to say I could connect my phone to, oh, uh, you know what, it's not going to work though. I'm remoted in on another computer. I would have to connect my phone to that remote computer. Damn. All right. So let's see, what's the, what are our options here? Let's, uh, let's take a look. Warning, you might not see start iOS simulator option when you click on no device in VS Code. If you are on a Mac, then you might have to run the following command in terminal. Uh, locate the bottom, select the device from the device simulator area. Dude, I don't see that. Quickly switch between. If no device is available, you um, and you want to use a device simulator. Uh, click no device. Okay. Okay. So I think that's what it is. So let me click on create Android. Oh man, you know what? I think I did not install this. Damn it. So let me go back to Uh, let's go to Android Studio real quick. Let's look at plugins. Uh, let's see what's installed. No, that's not what I'm looking for. So it's not. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So when I installed Android Studio, I did not, um, and I knew it, man, I should have installed the emulator, but I didn't. So obviously that's my mistake. But, so let me go back. Let me go back to where my download folder, Android Studio. And see if it gives me an option to install it.
Um, uh, that's fine. Let's click yes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall everything again. Yep, I'm gonna click this device as well. All right, so now it's installing it, hopefully. So let's see. Dude, I remember back in the day, man, when we were, you know, using... So this was probably like 10 years ago with Python. You know, there was like... Python nowadays is so easy to configure, dude. But back in the day on Windows, it was not that easy. It was just a pain in the butt, it seems like. Um, a lot of little nuances to get it to work. And once you get it to work, you're like, cool, it works. Um, you know, everything's fine. And you didn't want to mess with it. And that's what this feels. This feels like, dude, it's, it's a pain in the butt, man. I feel like it is not as straightforward or as clean that I was thinking anyways to be, um, Because there's a lot of s configuration, you gotta install dependencies and this and that, and <sighs> so let's see. Why did not? Uh, can oh there's no active device that's why so let's go back to Chrome I guess right we'll do Chrome if it runs what's gonna happen waiting for a connection from debug service on Chrome Oh, never mind. So let me close out of this. Here it goes right here. Uh, dev, Dart Dev Tool included. Additional debugger. Blah, blah, blah. Um, try it. All right. Open widget inspector page. Open Dev Tool, then browser. Flutter dev tools, no thanks. Where's my app? So where is it? oh here it goes right here, duh. Alright, so we actually got it. I guess we got it to work, right? We got it working in the browser to be able to mimic. But ultimately, what it was saying is, like, so I have a, I had, do have an Android device, right? I have the uh, Samsung Fold, so I could connect this phone to my computer. I'm remoted into it, so I can't, you know, I have a USB cable here. This, this will not work because if I do that, it's connected to my streaming computer, not that, not this computer that I'm messing with. If I connect this phone to my computer, which is on the other side, connected to the network. What should happen, and again, probably try it, test it out next time, is I should be able to go, uh, should be, it should be a device that becomes available, and I should be able to find it, right, select it as a device, which means when the app starts, in this case, it would start on my device, and I should be able to play around with the app. This demo app right now, you can tell the Flutter demo, Ultimately, this is a boilerplate code that we started. So just, I guess this is like standard. It says that you push what the plus, it increments. It's ultimately all it's doing is just some kind of function, right? You got this, oh, you can't see it. Let me move it to the side. Let me make it smaller. Ideally though, this would be in mobile format, obviously, right? Um, so even if I were to I don't know, put it in inspection, mobile. 
iPhone. Dude, that's way too small. Oh, duh, it's on 50%. So it'll be something like that in mobile, I guess. Damn it. So ultimately, the, you click on the plus sign button down below, it just increments in. Again, not doing nothing special. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. But ultimately, this gives us our code to get started right on the app. And that's kind of what we're following right now, man. We're like kind of getting familiar with with everything. Um, this is, again, this is a demo that we got started with because it's like the default that it, we get. Try hot reload. Flutter offers a fast development cycle with stateful hot reloads. The ability to reload the code of a live running app without restarting or losing app state. Okay. So open this. Change the string you have push to click. So let's see how that works. So ultimately what, what is this is saying is. And let me kind of put this side by side to compare. Damn, it won't take it. All right, let me go ahead and manually adjust. So what it's saying is that we would have changed some of the text in here. For example, I don't need this either. This terminal, bring it down. Where's the text? The message, right? Like where it says you have pushed the button ten times. So now I gotta find that. There it goes. You have push. So let's say what 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 it's saying is if I were to do clicked. And I save, it did a hot reload i don't know if you saw it but it showed up and ultimately refreshes and now this it did change though uh let me make sure my project auto save let me put it back to what it was undo undo what the hell there it goes So it's not changing. I guess I have to save it a change. Let me see what is this trying to say. Do not stop your app. Let your app run. Save all your changes. Invoke save and then all oh, hot reload. Okay, so you do gotta save it. So again, if I were to hit save, see where it says hot restart complete and boom, now it shows your changes right away. Hot reload. This is hot reload. So let me change this to click, clicked. If I do hot reload, yep, it changed it back. So you could do a save or change it through here. So there's a restart to restart it from scratch or do the hot reload, which is what it's talking about. And then you can open up in dev windows and so forth. All right, cool. So let's move on. Profile or release runs. Do not test the performance of your app with debug and hot reload enabled. Okay. So far you have been running your app in debug mode. Debug mode uh, trades performance for useful de uh, developer features such as hot reload and step debugging. It's not unexpected to see slow performance, which makes sense. Once you are ready to analyze performance or release your app, you'll want to use Flutter profile or release build mo uh, modes for more information. All right, cool. So now let's write your first Flutter app. So we're going to go through this process. Uh, you are now ready to start your first Flutter app, Code Labs. In, in about an hour and a half, you will learn the basics of Flutter by creating an app that works on mobile, desktop, and web. Uh, the Code Lab above walks you through the writing your first Flutter app. For all platforms, mobile, desktop, and web, you might prefer to take another... Okay, so that's cool. So let's start. 
So to me, what it's doing is it kind of walking to creating a basic app. Uh, Flutter is a Google UI toolkit to build application from a web. Yep. Um, so this is like a favorites. The application generates cool sounding names such as okay the user can ask for the next name favorites what well, you learned the basic of how flutter works creating layouts in flutter connecting user interaction like buttons to add behaviors keep your flutter co code organized make your app responsive all right cool And here is to walk you to. So pretty much it's just, it's a YouTube video. It's what it sounds like, what it's doing. Um, I believe so, right? Click next to start. So we already got Visual Studio installed. So see how it's, you could connect the device to actually test it out. Um, We strongly recommend choosing your development device operating system as development target. So, for example, if your computer runs Windows, choose Windows as the development target. For example, say you are using Windows laptop to develop a Flutter app and you choose Android as your development target, you typically attach an Android device to your Windows laptop via USB and your app in development runs on the attached Android device, but you could also choose Windows target. Okay, so that's where we have actual Windows, which in my case will be the browser. Install Flutter, we already went through all of that. We got Flutter installed. Um, so let's click next. Create your first Flutter project, which we kind of did, which is, we actually did already, right? Which kind of gave us the the um, the project that we have today, right now. Copy and paste the initial app in the left panel. VS Code. Make sure the Explorer selected and open the PubSpec YAM file. So let me put this to the side. Let's kind of keep both windows open while we kind of walk through this. Right. And then let me move this to the side. So it wants me to, to look, at, look at my specs yam file. Let me minimize this. So what am I looking for here? It says in the left panel, open it up. All right. So I got the file. Replace the context of this file with the following. So this is where you can kind of configure a lot of your information, right? Think of it as, as you build an application, the application is going to have a version to the application. It's going to have who, who's the publisher, all of that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where saying all of that lives in here, right? So if we take a look at it, we're dealing with the name of the application. So this is the name. This is fine. Leave it as is. We're going to put a description, a new flutter project, um, testing around with flutter. It's pretty much what we're doing here. Right. And then we get down, we got version. So we got version number. So publish to none, remove this line. If you wish to publish to uh, dev it says, yep. It says remove this line if you wish to publish to pub dev. So there must be, that's like the, the development portal probably is my guess. So, but it says to remove it. Um, let's take a look at this. The following line prevents the package from damn it. I need to make, let me minimize this. That's why. Let me make this a bit smaller. There you go. So it says the following, the following line prevents the package from being accidentally published to PubDev using Flutter PubPublish. This is 
preferred for private packages. So I'm taking it as it's kind of private from a sense of, you know, you publish it and you you could only be the only one that, you know, could install it to test it out would be my guess. So I guess I need to go ahead and um, comment that out because it's saying if it's not commented out, if it's provided, then it's going to publish to that whatever this name is. So I'll remove that for now. Version environment SDK. This is 2.19. All right. Dependencies. Uh, use material design true. So where is the app material design true? The following line ensure that the material icons font is included with your application so that you can use the icons in the material. Okay. To add assets to your application, add an add an asset section like this. This is where you're gonna I guess if you're if you have images that are being used in your applications or custom icons or whatever it is, you have to include it in your asset section. Um Which in this case, I guess we have to create a location, right? And then you got to specify the pass so we know where to get it from. But that's it. That's all we need for now. The pub specs YAM file specifies basic information about your app, such as its current version, dependency, then the assets, which to include when it ships, which makes totally sense. If you give your app a name other than namer app, you need to change the first line. Um, I mean, okay, so we need to change that line. line. That's what it seems like. So next, open up another configuration file, which is the analysis option YAM file. Let's sit, take a look at this. So let's see what this is all about. All right, so this one doesn't have too much in here. This file configures the an analyzer, which st uh, statistically analyzes dark code to check for errors, warnings. Oh, okay. So this is kind of ensuring that your code is in order, I guess. The issues identified by the analyzer are surface in the UI of Dart enabled IDEs. Okay. And so linters and rules of voice. So you could add some, I'm assuming you, you could add rules and things of that nature. Yep. So that's kind of what it's doing here. So we have linter, we have rules, and from here it's adding a few rules. Replace its content with the following. So the package is fine. It's bringing in package, flutter, lint. Yep, that makes sense. Then we have this. Then right now there is no rules. The rules are pretty much blank, but it's saying here these are some of the rules to add. Avoid, print, prefer, uh, constant construct, blah, blah, blah. Use keys and widgets. Prefer final fields. False, false. So it's pretty much saying all of this is false. I don't know if it's true by default. These files determine how strict Flutter should be when analyzing your code. Since this is your first uh, Flutter, you you are telling the analyzer to take it easy. You can always tune this later. In fact, as you get closer to publishing, an actual production app, you will almost certainly want to want the analyzer stricter than this. Okay, so that, that's I will need to review to see what what are some of the other options. But for now, um, I get what it's doing. We could always add on to it, right? To kind of add more rules. And so here's like uncomment to disable the avoid print rule. So right now, avoid print, but I put it in false, so that means it does allow to print. Prefer single quotes, true. Prefer, yeah, I don't have that on here. Um, but I guess those are some of the rules. So there's the URL for the rules. Need to look into that later. Let me go ahead and save. Uh, this determines how strict, okay. Finally, open the main file, right? So our main file, it's ultimately going to be this guy, main Dart file. And right now we have about 115 lines of code in here. And then replace the contents of this file with the following. 
So pretty much it wants us to replace it with this code here. These 50 lines of code are in, uh, are the in entries of the app so far. Uh, the code lab is racing ahead to point you to get started. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so. So let's copy this code here for now. And let's kind of walk through it as well, All right? I like to, so we get the red squiggly line. I'm trying to think why. Target of URI doesn't exist. Package English words, English words are dart. So I'm gonna assume we don't have that yet. So let's see if it talks about installing any of that. So again, we this is our, our main pass. This is where our, our project starts, void main. And then we're pretty much saying we're gonna run app and this is our app class, which is my app. And then we're saying extends stateless widget. So let's just kind of read out a widget that does not require mutable state. A stateless widget is a widget that describes part of the user interface by building uh, the build process continues um, of the user interface. Um, okay. So then we have the constant my app super key. So I'm not sure what this is here, but we'll hopefully figure that out as we start to code. Uh, what do we have here? Change notifi notifier provider. So it returns, where is that coming from? Change. Uh, again, I'm not sure unless that's coming from one of these packages that did not import in, but let's kind of walk through, through this project and let's see if, if they talk about it some more. Uh, let's click next. Uh, this step adds a next. This step adds a next button to generate a new word pairing. Launch the app first. Open up, and make sure that you have your target device selected, which in our case would have to be. Let me go ahead and stop this. Let me hit save and then let me go ahead and run build error exists show errors. Uh, what happened here? So there should be no issues with these files. Those should all be fine. Uh, you know what? I think I need to change this to move it back to Chrome. So let's see. See, I'm getting all these squiggly error messages, right? So that tell me you can't find it. So obviously there's something going on here. Not sure what it is.
Replace the contents of the file with the following, which in my case I actually did, main dart, and then now I'm having some issues. Hmm. Damn, what issue then am I having? Why are they not finding it, man? Okay, so let's go back to Pug Spect and let's look at those, what it talks about for that. So we have SDK Flutter, that's all fine. Dependencies, Flutter, the, oh, the, see, see how we, I forgot to add these two dependencies in here. So there's two dependencies that I needed to add for the purpose of this project. So, so if you're dealing with, like any other a programming language, right? When you're dealing with packages that need to be included, in this case needs to be included into the ZM file which I obviously did not include. The only thing that, that is included is this guy here. That's it. See the following as the icons. Okay. So let me go ahead and add these two. That makes total sense now, man. Total, total sense. Yep, that makes sense. Let me save that. So now if I come back, there it goes. Now it went away. Perfect, dude. I knew it, man. I knew there was something wrong. And that's what it was. Got it fixed. All right. So that's why I couldn't find it because I need it. So there it goes. Our packages are being included over here. Flutter is over here. And then these two packages are over here. So that's where when we import package, then you got to specify the package name, at which these are the different packages names, the version of the package that we're dealing with. Now, what I'm not sure, there's something that I need to look into when it comes to packages. If all of those packages are included in the, in the, um, like, let's see, dependencies, specify an other package that your package needs in order to work. To automatically upgrade your package dependency to the latest version, consider running Flutter Pub Upgrade. Okay, so it sounds like as we as I upgrade, it should bring in all different latest versions of it available. All right, hold on, guys. And so it, it does upgrade to major versions. I guess we specified major versions. So, which is kind of interesting because it feels like it's different than other languages. Like let's say with Node or uh, like JavaScript, obviously, right? Or even Python where you have to explicitly install those specific packages. It kind of seems like you bring in all of the packages available and then you just have to include them. Like if while you did while in your development environment, you have all the packages that are available. So you got to specify what you want to use and based on what you specify to use, that's what is going to include in your build. You're going to make sure that those packages are included in your build, which is a different approach. And that's kind of interesting. Um, now I get why like in Python and the, in the other programming languages, you wouldn't want to do that because if you do that, you'll be bringing in all the packages, which is number one. Number two, there's so many versions that could one could break the other and so forth. So you wouldn't want to do that either. So that's that's interesting. Okay, hey, learn something new. So now let's go ahead and uh, let me run this. Let me go to run and debug. Um, Chrome. Let's run. 
so now it's running so it should open up in Chrome by default it's taken a while though waiting to connect from the bug service in Chrome connect to new app there it goes and this is it so it's not doing nothing I don't know if this would I guess this is it but it's not doing much Uh, yeah, okay, so let's see, random idea, that's what it says. So let's see what I'm, what, what am I supposed to get back in return when I do run it? So let's click next. Next, launch the app, which I did. Hit the play button. Uh, okay, yep, no, this is, this is valid, yep, that's exactly what I have. After about a minute, your app launches in debug mode and does uh, it looks much. Yeah, yep, exactly. So at least you know we know it's working. Everything's come. If your development target is a mobile device, it's possible that your text is. Um, all right, so I need to, that's going to be cool. I need to test that out. So now to do a, a first hot reload at the bottom of your. Uh, main dart file add some something to the string in the first text so text object and save the file and then it should reload it's pretty much what it's saying so let's go back so down here under the scaffold section body column children a random idea um, example change so this is where it's saying type something else right so we kind of went through that where if we were to type something else and where's my and then if I were to hit save over here we see it change over here I right? reloads and then got the new information which is cool because you're developing and you're saving you see those changes. Now what's kind of strange is in VS Code I do have autosave. You would think autosave, like I know it in for other development that I have done, when it saves, you'll see my interpreter like in Python refresh, like reload everything again. But in this in this case, it literally wants you to save. It's not doing that by on its own. Which is kinda kinda interesting. I wonder why. So yep, that seems to be working. Uh, so next thing, I'm gonna add a button. Next, add a button at the bottom of the column, right below the second text. So if we take a look at what they have, right? So we have our scaffold, body, children, right? So here's our list of two different texts, right? So because we're providing a text, then another text, and then it's in a it's in a list. So what we're doing here is right below this. So it's still within this children list. We're gonna now add add button. It's pretty much what we're doing. So evaluate button, autofocus and click behavior. Okay, so we're gonna evaluate button, which now that gives us everything that we need. So it would be on press, you gotta do some kind of action pretty much, which makes sense. So on press, I'm gonna remove this, oops. And it would be some sort of function, right? In our case, it would be print a button, oops, pressed. Semicolon at the end, just again, like other languages, you gotta do the same thing. You're not in Python, obviously, but in other languages you do. And then we have child and then the child will take some sort of other um, 
in our case it's going to be a text value so let me see so the takes a, a run of text with a single style the text widget display the string of text with single style the string might break across multiple lines or might all be displayed on the same line depending on the layout so that's pretty much what it is. Think of it as basic text. Um, in this case, we would just, we, this is called next. Uh, comma, inner. Oops, nope, that's not right. Yeah, here's the comma, inner, and then that's fine where is that. Then this could get removed. We don't need this. Dude, what the hell, man? Oh, duh, I can't remove this. They're just telling me, like, um, never mind. All right, so this is notating to me that this is a column scaff like where everything this is this is, i like it it tells me where everything's what where it ends so that's cool so let me go ahead and save this which means if i go back now we have a button we click next i mean it doesn't do nothing but nevertheless we do have a button so let me look at my debugger connect to the app connect to a running ad enter the URL which is going to be this guy over here why are they not finding it what the hell So, oh, uh, probably doesn't like local, I guess. Is that what it is? Because that's strange if it doesn't. Nope. Dude, I don't know what's going on here. Why can I not find it? Because that's strange. Let me open up. Hmm. Yeah, that's odd. Either way, that's fine. Um, I was trying to see see it in action. I don't know if it shows it. There it goes. Yep, it's in the console, right? So it's printed to the console. As you could tell, there print. See how it's incrementing up. Well, no, it's not incrementing though, just because it's showing it over and over again. But so right now we have a button. The text of the button is next. That's what the text is to display next. We didn't add any style, you could tell, but by default, by just you know, Flutter is giving it style, right? Now ultimately you could customize it. We haven't got to that point yet, but you know, it's allowed us to do it. The text is very basic, as the one could tell. So this text is what app state dot current dot as lowercase. So we'll see what this actually represents. Cause right now it doesn't really make sense, but okay. So now let's go back to let's follow on. Uh, when you save the changes, the app updates again. Yep. Makes sense. Press the button, and then ultimately, in this case, it's kind of connected to the console, which I don't, uh, let me make sure, do I have under output, maybe? Oh, there it goes, debug console. So see under debug console, there it goes. I could see the changes happening there. 
Yep. And this would be the. I'm assuming the um, if I wanted to use the debugger. So all right, no, that's fine. That makes sense. So figure that out. A flutter crash course in five minutes. As much fun as it is to watch debug console, you may want to want the button to do something more meaningful. So now take a closer look to understand how it works. So we have our void main. At the very top of the file, you'll find main function. It in its current form, it only tells Flutter to run the app defined in my apps. Yep, which makes per perfect sense. This is your your starting point of your application, and you're telling it what to run, which app to run, which in this case is our class that it's executing. Right, so that makes total sense. So now let's look at this piece. The my app class extends stateless widget, which are the elements from which you build every Flutter app. As you can see, even the app itself is a widget. So everything is broken up to widgets. That's kind of how it's built, right? It's all widgets and you just kind of piece everything together. Uh, we'll get to the explanation of stateless widgets versus stateful widgets later. Okay. So in this case, we're dealing with a stateless widget. The code in my app sets up the whole applicate the whole app. It creates the app wide state. More on that later. Names the app, defines the visual theme, and sets the home widget, the starting point of your app. So we take a look at it. Um, override widget build build context uh, return change notifier provider which this this has to be there it goes and under the provider package uh, create contents my app state then this is our child title name of the app so let me go back and look at the app app namer app so this is our title of our app so let's call it um um project one app that's what we're dealing with and then boom project one app cool so that's what that is steam this is our theme use material three true then we have color coded color scheme so if I were to change this to blue or purple wish, let's hit reload. I'm assuming this, there it goes. So this theme is kind of applied to, in this case, all your buttons and things of that nature. So now, now you, you could easily have the same color scheme on your app, which is, which I like, man. That's pretty cool. Um, now what is this? Create a theme that you just use to configure a theme. When providing a color scheme, apps can either can either provide one directly using the color scheme parameters or generate one. Use material three. So I'm assuming this is related to the theme. So if I were to make this false, let's see what happens. No theme. So this must be a basic theme or I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. But let me change it back to true because I would say true has a better looking style. That's for sure. All right. Um, let's see what else. It creates the app wide state. Okay, we got that. That makes sense. Played around with that. Some of this. It makes sense. You got to get familiar with. So we have a theme uh, data, which is this guy here, theme data. Then we have material app, and which is part of a child. Then we have change notifier provider, okay, which this widget ultimately is building but it's it's being provided from this all right so that that kind of makes sense uh next the app 
state class. So where's that at? There it goes. App state class extends change notifier. And in this case, um, the variable current equals word pair random. Create a single word pair randomly takes the same parameter as, so I'm not sure what that is exactly, but let's see. Next, the my app state class defines the apps well state. That is your first, um, so into collab, we'll keep it simple and focus. There are many powerful ways to manage app states in Flutter. One of the easiest to explain is change notifier. The approach take taken by this app. So using the change notifier to manage state. So let's see. My app state defines the data the app needs to function. Right now it only contains a single variable with the current random word pair. You will add this um, add to this later. The state class extends change notifier which means that it could notify others about its own changes. For example, if the current word uh, pair changes, some widgets in the app needs to know. Okay, which makes sense, right? You have something that changes, it notifies other pieces of the app to update themselves or change as well. The state is created and provide, provided to the whole app using the change notifier provider. C code above. Yep, this allows any widget in the app to get hold of the state. So we have my app, my home page, and then you have some widget, other widgets. My app state is up here on top. So as things change in here, they could funnel down to the other widgets. Okay. Lastly, there's the home page which is what we're looking at now, home page. The widget you already modified, each new numbered line below maps to a line number commented. Every widget defines a build method that automatically calls every time the widget. So let's take a look at it. So we have a build message. Yep, you're right. So we have my home page. Uh, we have the widget, the build method. Every widget defines a build method that automatically automatically calls every time the widget circumstance change so that the widget is always up to date. My homepage track changes to the app, current state changes, the watch method. Every build method must return a widget or more typically a nested tree of widgets. In this case, the top level widget is scaffold. You aren't going to work with scaffold in the in this collab, but it's helpful. It's a helpful widget and it is found in the vast majority of real world Flutter apps. It says, in this case, the top level widget is, uh, let's see. So here's app state. So we have app state, which is content dot watch my app state. So it's watching this up here. And so now we have app state and where we have current there it goes which is this variable as lowercase so let me see that's what this is here that's why they're being displayed here that's why if i were to save we get a different value boom because it's giving a random word pair that's what it is it's exactly what it is so if I were to do something like, I'm just wondering, does it take numbers? Like 53, what happens if I do something like that? Ooh, 
nope because it's doing lowercase so let's see what if i do a text and do john smith dude why is it not saving Uh, do I need to specify this as a text? App state dot current as lowercase. The getter as lowercase is defined for the type string. Try importing the library that defines that lowercase, correcting the name to the name of an existing getter. Um. So what is, I guess, let me go back and let me put this back to how it was. So what is the random word gives us? Random word, just randomize, creates a single word pair random, taking the parameters. You could give it parameters. If you need more than one word pair constructed, but the return, I mean, I, I'm assuming that's what it has to be a string, right? Hmm. That's fine. I'm not going to worry about that for now. All right. So that's where that's coming in, which makes sense. That's why we're, again, this is where we talked, where they're talking about if this changes. Um, if this changes, it's feeding this and it's changing it over here as well. So the as lowercase is part of returns the word pair as a simple string in lowercase. So this must be part of this object word pair. See, it's a word pair type. That's why. So what if we do another one and we call this var um, name equals John Smith. And now I want to add this on here text app state name noops comma and then i do a save would it take it boom it did take it nice that's what it was all right cool all right so this makes sense here so okay i'm just trying to take it through right if you got changes in here variables assigning variables here you could feed them bring bring in your app state and then you you know with a watcher and then as this changes it'll feed this as well okay home page uses the watch method track changes to the app with the watch message up which is this guy right here makes sense uh what else every build message must return a widget right must return a widget that's why we have a build um build so if we take a look at it describe the part of the user interface represented by this widget the framework calls this method when this widget is inserted into a tree in a given build text so we have a build then we have our context And our context is doing a watch on app state. Widget build. Okay, let's see. Uh, columns and one of the most basic layout which it's in Flutter, it takes any number of children and, and puts them in a column top to bottom by default. 
So that's kind of where we have children. And then pretty much this is first row, second row, third row, and then so on, right? So that we saw that pattern here, right? One, two, three, and then next. Because we have a button down here. So that's because I guess that's how it is by default. Um, you change this text widget in the first step. The second text widget takes app state and accesses the only members of that class current, which is a word pair. Word pair provides several helpful getters such as as Pascal Camel or as Snake Case. Here we're using lower lowercase, but you can change this now if you prefer to an alternative. Notice how Flutter code makes heavy use of uh, the trailing commas. The particular comma doesn't need to be here because children's is the last and also only member of this particular column. So we have body, column, then inside column we have our children. And it's separated pretty much by a comma to separate each one. Uh, yet it is, it is in general a good idea to use, this makes adding more members. Oh, so is this saying we don't need to have commas at the end? Is that what it's saying? No, that's not what it's saying, man. Uh, there's, that's not what it means. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me go back. Let me read it again. Um, notice how Flutter code makes heavy use of the trailing commas. This particular comma doesn't need to be here because children or I think it's referring to this comma here. That's what it is. Okay, that makes sense. Saying that you don't need to have it. Alright, cool. Uh, let's see what else. Now you connected the button to the state. Your first behavior is scroll to app state and add a get next method. So under app state, which would be up here, this is where we would add a void get next. And it would be current equals word pair and then it would be random damn it random why why is it not dude what the hell there it goes I don't know why it wouldn't work then gotta make sure to put that semicolon at the end, because if not, you're gonna have you could tell red squiggly lines, right? So you gotta make sure you got that included. And then we're doing what is what is this notify listener? What is the notify listener? Call all the register listeners. Call this method whenever the object changes to notify any client that the object has changed. That's what it is. So I guess kind of like a refresher, right? When something has changes, it's going to so this is what I'm doing when the, when the app start the application starts it's gonna randomly assign a value to current which current is being displayed right down here. So let me remove this because I don't need this anymore. But what I added uh, I need to add a semicolon. What I added with a method which is called get next. Now this is ultimately going to be linked to our button. We'll 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 see how that's done in a minute. I'm assuming we're going to call it right. We're going to replace this. Instead of printing it, we're going to call it. But ultimately, as we call the button, we're assigning a new value to it. So we'll see that value change because the notify listener message anytime there's a value that's changing in here, it's going to notify 
execute notify listener so let's see how we add the button now and yep there it goes app state dot get next because it is part of app state we already got app state in here because we're bringing that in so that makes total sense we're going to remove this print button we're going to do app state get next semicolon boom and that should be it let's save and let's see this bad boy in action and there you go now it's changing so that dude so far that makes total sense man everything we have we're doing so far that we're now there's some stuff i'm not quite sure yet like i would say like this override i'm not exactly sure the purpose um stateless widget not exactly sure exactly right there's some things but for the most of a lot of the stuff that's happening here makes total sense man it really does so and again, that's one of the things, man, as you become a developer, as you become good and know concepts and at least know one language under your belt, as you start learning something else, it's not, put it this way, when you first go get into programming, your first language, dude, it may feel like it took you over two years or over a year to learn the basics of it. And it probably took you another three to four years before you even feel that you're even decent at, at it, right? I mean, it happens, man. You could be coding for a few years and you still don't feel that you're that good. Um, but what I would tell you, though, once you got one language down and got the fundamentals down and you start learning another language, you start noting things will click way faster, man. Way, way faster. So. All right. So now that we have that working, save the next section, we'll make it a bit prettier. So we're going to talk about styling now. This is how it should look and it does look that way so now we're gonna talk about styling so before we go into the styling piece i'm gonna stop right here guys and uh yeah man been about two and a half hours so we're gonna continue this on some additional streams later on so again if you're interested web my mobile app development you know i'm going i'm learning flutter guys so anybody who's new wants to learn flutter we can learn it together walk through it one thing I would say, guys, that the initial setup was a pain in the but once you get that nailed down, and hopefully if you saw me installing it, if you get stuck, maybe you could see something that I did that fixed it on my side, that hopefully fixed it on your side. But nevertheless, guys, man, appreciate it. Thanks for watching the stream. And um, we're gonna I'm gonna be doing more live coding sessions on here. And uh, again, guys, on the stream, you're more than free to ask questions as well as we're as I'm learn, you know, coding, uh, learning how to. In this case, learning Flutter. But even if I'm not learning Flutter, if I'm working on something else, ask questions. And uh, again, guys, appreciate it, man. And uh, y'all take care, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.